Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. Hello everybody, my name is Zell and welcome back to yet uh, another reaction video. Now, I said in the last video that my computer was going to get fixed, and it did. Um, the issue was quite simple, I'll explain it in another video because I want to get back on track with uh, my reaction videos. So, I'll talk about that next time, and what the hell was that just now? <laughs> Something just fell. I don't know what it was, but if something fell in here. Might have been a wire. It might have been a wire over there. Um, but with that being said, we're going to head and react to SCP-2833, Pregnant Man, Indian Mystery. Never heard of this SCP. And like I said in another previous video, I like to bring back some SCP videos because I haven't done SCP in a long time. So we're going to go ahead and play this bad boy in three... Two, one, go. A woman walks through the lonely hills in the dead of night. Her purple sari is torn and filthy from days of exposure to the elements. Her bare feet have been cut up and bruised by the rough terrain she walks. But her clothes and feet are not the most noticeable thing about her. This woman is pregnant, her belly swollen to freakish proportions. It's frankly a miracle that she's even able to walk in this state. She stumbles and sways under the weight of the thing growing inside her. Whatever it is, it's too large to be any kind of ordinary baby. But she keeps moving, muttering to herself in a language that no human ear has heard in years. Her eyes are glazed over, almost hypnotized. She moves with great purpose, but her vacant facial expression makes it appear as though she doesn't know exactly what that purpose is. Mm. She just needs to keep moving further into the wilderness until it happens, whatever it is. The one thing that's certain is that it isn't anything good. A car rumbles down a nearby dirt road. It's being driven by Dr. Vinay Ramachadran, a medical practitioner from the nearby city of Surat who occasionally drives out to the more rural areas where the locals might not have easy access to medical help. He spots the staggering woman and immediately pumps the brakes of his car. She's clearly in need of medical attention. Thank goodness he happened to be driving by at the time. Dr. Ramachadran grabs his medical bag from the back seat and rushes towards the woman, who collapses in a heap before he reaches her. That's when, to is she about horror, to give? Dr. Ramachadran notices that the woman's belly is continuing to swell at an unnatural rate. Even for a woman who is heavily pregnant with triplets, this would still be far too large, and the rate at which she's swelling is akin to someone blowing up a balloon. By the time Dr. Ramachadran reaches her, the worst has already happened. The woman's belly has burst open, and crouching on her corpse is the thing that was growing inside her. An adult man. Nude and covered in death, Dr. Ramachadran's terror only increases when he notices that the man is eating her. Elsewhere, a riot is unfolding in the streets. A megaphone-wielding instigator barks orders for violence and chaos as the rioters spread. Okay, I was not expecting that, so I was expecting something completely different. Setting fires, smashing windows, and attacking any unfortunate civilians caught in their way. It's one of the worst riots that the area has ever seen. Even the veteran riot cops are frightened by the ferocity of it. The cops descend and clash with the crowd of ever-advancing rioters. They're beaten back with crowbars, baseball bats, knives, and metal pipes. And behind them all, the instigator continues spitting his venomous words, working the crowd into an unmatchable frenzy. They'll need heavy reinforcements if they want to get this riot under control. 
That's when one of the riot cops on the front line, Sergeant Abhishek, notices something strange. So many of the rioters seem to have the exact same face, the face of the instigator. Another place, another time, four men are digging up a grave in a desolate old graveyard. They work uh -huh. tirelessly, all moving in perfect synchronicity. They're only interrupted when a group of heavily armed men crash the party and start firing on them. But these grave robbers are prepared. All of them draw revolvers like a gang in an old western and begin returning fire, causing the men in tactical gear to seek cover behind the nearby tombstones. While one of the grave robbers continues to fire, the other three scatter during the confusion. When his gun runs dry with that telltale click, the men in tactical gear immediately rise up and pincushion him with shot after shot of their assault rifles. He does the bullet dance like Tony Montana and collapses to the ground. But when the gunmen approach to confirm the kill, there's a horrifying twist of fate. Swarms of horrible red flies start pouring out of every Whoa. bullet wound, swarming the attackers who retreat swatting away these horrible little insects. But there's so many of them, there's no way to stop at least some of them from crawling into their mouths. Here's an interesting fact. All of these nightmarish incidents are connected. In the year 1969, a mysterious man was arrested in Himatnagar, an area in the Indian state of Gujarat. This man had been accused of inciting civil unrest, terrorizing and distressing the local people. He was later extradited to an unknown location after the Indian authorities received a request from a mysterious organization known as, yep, you guessed it, the yeah, SCP, SCP Foundation. Foundation. Who could this man? It seems like a colony to me, where the bugs appear to be the cause for the pregnant uh, pregnancies. At least that's what I currently think. And have possibly been to attract such attention. The authorities thought it best not to question it. They were probably just glad to be rid of the troublemaker once and for all. Except they weren't not by a long shot. A few years later in 1975, a group of four men were discovered in a cemetery, this time in Ahmedabad, another location in Gujarat, India, for desecrating graves. This would be strange and upsetting enough, but what really sent things to the next level is that they all looked exactly the, the same. Discovery that these four men were all the same man. Each one was not only genetically identical to one another, but also to the man that had been extradited in 1969. You'd be more than justified in asking, what the hell is going on here? Maybe they were just a group of highly rare quintuplets, five children all born from the same mother, who just happened to have a predilection towards crime and antisocial behavior, or perhaps something stranger was afoot. The four who appeared in the cemetery might have been clones of the original troublemaker in Himnatagar. As relatively simple as those explanations would be, the truth was in fact far, far weirder than mad science or coincidentally criminal quintuplets. The four from the cemetery had been ambushed by operatives of the Global Occult Coalition, another shadowy organization fans of this channel are likely to recognize. Yep. The Coalition, or GOC, is a group that views itself as the police of the paranormal world, using extremely advanced technology to destroy supernatural entities and artifacts rather than contain them. They've been known to work both alongside and against the SCP Foundation. Both groups combined interest in four genetically identical men in an Indian graveyard seemed to suggest that there was something supernatural about their origin. One of the men had been mm. killed by the GOC, while the remaining three were taken into custody by the SCP Foundation. You gotta love the power of teamwork. But who were these men? Where had they come from? And why did they share identical genes to the first man from six years earlier? Could there have been even more of them? Well, in the years following, the Foundation has been able to determine that, yes, there are more of these genetically identical individuals out there. Across the more rural states of India, like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Himachal Pradesh, Haryana, Punjab, Jammu, and Kashmir, there may be over a thousand instances of the same person. Collectively, they are known as SCP-2833. While their outward appearance can vary somewhat, Instances of SCP-2833 all share the exact same genetic traits as each other. Depending on the area they are located in, these anomalous people can speak various languages and regional dialects, including Hindi, English, Gujarati, Dogiri, Kashmiri, Punjabi, Urdu... Jesus, how many languages are there? <laughs> I forget how many languages there are in the world. even an outdated unknown language that doesn't correspond with any known modern dialect or language family. 
Each SCP-2833 also possesses the ability to manipulate the organic matter of their own body. Now, we don't mean that these men will stretch themselves like Mr. Fantastic or turn yeah. into something out of John Carpenter's The Thing, but they're able to use their bodies to create, well, something. SCP-2833 instances can produce a small anomalous parasite known as SCP-2833-A. These are often released through any bodily orifice like the mouth, nose, or ears, or through any cuts or open wounds suffered by an SCP-2833. In other words, if you shot and killed an SCP-2833, perhaps in a cemetery under the orders of the Global Coats Coalition, then these parasites would still be able to escape through the victim's bullet wounds. The only way to stop this from happening is to incinerate the body of a deceased SCP-2833, burning them until there is nothing left. So what exactly are these parasites? Well, they're tiny invertebrates, meaning they're a small, cold-blooded organism with no spine that can live on land or in water. They closely huh. resemble dipterians, which are any order of insects that contain what we know as flies. Red in color and 20 millimeters in length, SCP-2833-As are composed of a combination of muscle tissue, keratin, the protein that your hair, skin, and fingernails are made from, and traces of... So, literally the insects are... contain the genetic structure to recreate another 2833. That's what I'm getting. Ash, strangely enough. They are also capable of flying with their two wings, and will use these to attempt to enter the body of a suitable host. While this can be any vertebrate creature, it seems they have a preference for humans. Once inside the host's body, an SCP-2833-A parasite will attach itself to their nervous system. This then allows the SCP-2833 instance that the parasite originated from to control the body of the host, taking over their bodily and motor functions, nervous system, and all of their sensory organs. From here, an SCP-2833 will then either subject the target to vivid, inescapable hallucinations oh. or manipulate the functions of their body. The parasites also contain a miniature instance of another SCP-2833, only about 2 millimeters long. While these mini SCP-2833 oh. are chemically inactive, lying dormant and unable to move, this changes if the parasite's host is a human female. In these cases, the SCP-2833-A creature will implant the miniature SCP-2833 within the uterus of their female host. After this, the new SCP-2833 will begin to rapidly grow, consuming any and all organic matter that surrounds it. Once again, the SCP-2833 that the parasite originated from is still able to manipulate the female host's body, and will use this control to make her leave her home and travel away from any urban environment. After a year, this new instance of SCP-2833 will be born in a truly horrific fashion. Every time this happens, the female host is unable to survive the process, dying as a result of being used as an incubator for the parasites. Wow. The newly formed SCP-2833 will retain all memories of the previous instance that released the parasite. They are even able to speak fluently from the moment they are born, but that isn't the most horrific part. What happens next is that the newborn SCP-2833 will then devour the body of the female host that carried it. Sometimes the host can die before an SCP-2833 is born, with the parasite keeping their body embalmed until the new instance emerges. But regardless, the mother of an SCP-2833 will always die during birth. The SCP Foundation has conducted a number of interviews with the instances of SCP-2833 that they have captured and detained. The first, SCP-2833-1, the man causing civil unrest in Himna Targar, 1969, 1969, referred to himself as we, implying that all of the SCP-2833 instances share the same consciousness, acting as a hive mind of sorts. One of the so I was right. Right earlier on in the video, there's some sort of hive, hive mind. And from the second like colony, SCP-2833-4, elaborated further on the nature of these anomalous beings when asked how many of the instances existed. We are in your cages. We are distant from the hordes of the ignorant. We are grown like crops and livestock. We are growing in numbers and faith, and we will grow until the ascension of Samadeh. Samadhi is beyond sight. The buried will rise, to be consumed as the doorway to rebirth. This is our cycle. Waiting for Samadhi with patience, we shall dance the Tandava and consume the world for its rebirth. Samadhi is, is a word Samadhi? meaning a crypt, 
usually the final resting place of a saint or someone of religious significance. Additionally, the Tandava is an ancient dance that, according to legends, was performed by the Hindu god Shiva, who is believed to be the source of all things, the cycle of creation, preservation, and destruction. So these anomalous beings and their parasites appeared to be awaiting the discovery of an ancient burial site, where huh. someone, or something, was prophesied to rise, consume the world, and then recreate it. Thinking this Samdi might pose a threat, the Foundation probed a later instance of SCP-2833 for further information on its significance. If you intend to seek Samadhi, your quest is in vain, for we are the inheritor to Samadhi. Only we. SCP-2833-42 protested when asked about the Samadhi by a Foundation researcher, one Dr. Sanjay Shiel. Samadhi does not threaten. It is we who were threatened, exiled when the Colossi overran Samadhi. We are the remnants, and we are never defeated. The instance went on. We are of glorious lineage, the chosen stock of Karsis Vasky. Only the strongest and most zealous may serve his purpose. To that end, we consume ourselves to persist and await for Samadhi. When asked who exactly Karsis Vasky was, SCP-2833-42 answered, Is it him? Are, we are Karsis Vasky. That word. Karsist has long been associated yeah, isn't with the that... religious cult of sarcasm. Yep, Another figured. group of interests you're likely to be familiar with if you're a fan of what we... Yeah, they're the guys that believe in sarcasm, believe in uh, flesh, if I'm not mistaken. Flesh is the way of their uh, lifestyle, like SCP-680... 616, I think it was? I forgot the name of the flesh that... the number of the flesh that it hates, but I think it's them. We do here. This group worships flesh and yeah, disease. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> and is seen as an apocalyptic threat by the SCP Foundation. The Sarkis religion was founded thousands of years ago by an ancient elder being known as the Sorcerer King of Aritum, also called Grand Karsist Ion. The goal of Sarkisism is to bring about a new age of flesh, elevating humanity to the form of gods and potentially terraforming the entire Earth using SCP-610. The flesh that hates. Yeah, it was 610. So who or what was Karsist Vasky? What role did it have in the religion of Sarkisism, and how does it link to SCP-2833? The Foundation has collected a number of documents, once belonging to a man named Sir William Henry Sleeman. Sleeman was an administrator who worked in India on behalf of the British East India Company before his death in 1856. And it is in his documents that some of the answers can be found. Hmm. According to Sir William, the poor of India told him about a group of mystics who were both revered and feared among the country's peasantry. This group called themselves the Vatula and seemed to hold what Sleeman described as an unusual fetish towards death and decay. Sounds an awful lot like the Sarkists, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So William heard rumors that these Vatula worshipped Shiva, but were never seen at temples, choosing instead to worship the Hindu god in seclusion. Additionally, though, each member of the Vatula, when asked, identified themselves by the title of Karsist Vasky. Not everyone feared them, however, as a group of men would often attack them. These men were thuggy, organized gangs of professional robbers and murderers that traveled India, strangling their victims to death and robbing them blind. Perhaps because of this, the Vatula seemed wary to interact with any other worshippers of Shiva, often dismissing them as pretenders to the faith. Hoping to appease and gain an audience with the Vatula, Sir William's allies unleashed what they called the Daughter of Shadows, better known as SCP-029. This divided the thuggy. Hey, I gotta look up SCP-029. Hold on. Writing it down. E that looks like an interesting SCP to look at. The Vatula would then accept Sleeman as an ally. Eventually, he achieved an audience with them, and was unable to determine whether the group was genuinely devoted to their religious beliefs, or was just a group of madmen. What Sir William didn't realize was that under the vestige of Karsist Vasky, this group was subtly spreading the influence of Sarkisism over India. As for SCP-2833, perhaps they are the descendants of the Vatula group, their lineage continuing through the passing of those little parasites. It's highly likely that these Vatula were all early instances of SCP-2833, which would explain why those captured by the SCP Foundation claim that they are all Karsist Vasky. 
A few years back in 2014, one of the Foundation's um, more recent one. cases uncovered a body that was a genetic match to the other instances of SCP-2833. However, this one wasn't found in India. Where is this? Krasnoraskai, Russia. It in Russia? It growths on its muscle tissue and bones, carrying multiple SCP-2833-A parasites inside its internal organs. The body had even been modified to contain an artificial uterus, which carried an infant SCP-2833 instance. It seemed that not only have SCP-2833 found a new way to evolve, carrying themselves in a modified body, but they're also beginning to spread further than ever before. You gotta hand it to oh. the Sarkists. They're certainly adaptable. Now go check out SCP-3989 The Bone Orchard and SCP-610 The Flesh That Hates for more scary Sarkist SCPs. Hmm. Okay, that was definitely a, an interesting SCP. Definitely different than all the ones I think I've reacted to over the last few years. Currently still finding more and more SCPs to look into. And there were some pointers that I actually did recognize in the video, like the flesh is hate, sarcasm. I, I haven't watched SCP in a while, but I still remember most of the basics about some of the groups so that is in the SCP universe. So I immediately recognized sarcasm right away as soon as they said it. it. Took me a while to catch on, but I eventually understood. Um, but that was interesting. Very much different than anything else I reacted to. Um, that being said, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's reaction video. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, guys, and I will see you next video. Bye.